Thank you all. Can you hear back there okay? Yeah. Everybody can hear? Should we test mics? Chris, so why don't you test yours? One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> four, five, six. Oh, okay. Four, five, six. Good evening, everybody. On behalf of the Central Connecticut Chambers of Commerce, I welcome you to the Irving Robbins School and the 2010 5th U.S. Congressional District Debate. I'll take a moment to explain the format for tonight. The session will last about an hour in duration. Each the session will begin with a three-minute opening statement by each of the candidates. Then a series of ten questions, four authored by the League of Women Voters, and six from the Central Connecticut Chambers of Commerce. We will alternate the answering of the questions between the candidates, with the candidate being asked the question having three minutes, and the other can uh, candidate having two minutes to respond. When we have completed the list of questions, each candidate will be given three minutes for a closing statement. At that point, the debate will be closed. Now, the candidates will be timed electronically tonight, and we'll have both a visual and audio warning. You probably see them on the respective tables there. Uh, at the 30 second mark, they'll be given a warning to kind of wrap it up. And once the red light is on, uh, the response period is over, and the candidate should end his response. Now, let me introduce the candidates for the 5th U.S. Congressional District. The challenger this year on my left, representing the Republican Party, is State Senator Sam Calagero. Democrat Congressman Chris Murphy. Yeah. Tom Terry, you may start with your opening three minute statement. Great. Uh, Tom, thank you very much for participating in this. Uh, to the Central Connecticut Chambers of Congress, thank you for hosting this. Uh, to my friend Congressman Murphy, it's a privilege to be able to share uh, the stage with you again in what I know is going to be a very uh, exciting debate. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here and investing some of your time um, in hearing from us in what I believe is going to be one of the most important elections that we've had in this country and in this state uh, for a very, very long time. Uh, it's a very real pleasure uh, for us to be here in Farmington tonight. I'm joined uh, by my wife, Lori Caligiri. Uh, we have strong ties to this community. Lori taught at Miss Porter School for a number of years. Uh, we have family that continue to live right here in town. Uh, and as very active members of Winding Trails, we love coming to Farmington as often as we can, especially in the summer, to enjoy this beautiful, beautiful town. Um, and it would be a privilege and an honor for us. And I say us because this is something that Lori and I really are doing jointly, especially with the seven and the five-year-old at home, uh, to be able to represent you as your congressman in Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm running for Congress because I am absolutely convinced that our country is heading in the wrong direction and we need to get it back on track as soon as humanly possible. That starts by growing jobs again. People are getting crushed in one of the worst recessions we've seen since the 1930s. Over 9% unemployment in Connecticut overall and double-digit employment in cities like Waterbury and Britain and Meriden mean that people throughout the 5th District are hurting, and they're hurting badly. And we need to get back to Washington policies that will allow us once again to start growing jobs. Chris Murphy, aside from being a friend, is a smart and capable person, and I like him. But I am absolutely convinced that his devotion to big government, higher taxing programs like the stimulus, the bailouts, and Obamacare, have only resulted in record deficits, record spending, higher taxes, and as a result, fewer jobs. Chris Murphy and I agree on the nature of the problems that we have to solve, but we have very dramatically different <coughs> views for how to solve them. I believe we start solving this problem by bringing fiscal responsibility back to Washington, D.C. I look forward to sharing that vision with you tonight. Thank you again very much for being here and being a part of this debate. Well, thank you, Tom, uh, for joining us uh, as moderator tonight. Thank you to the Central Connecticut Chambers uh, for hosting this debate and again to all of you. It is a pleasure to be here with uh, my friend Sam Calgary. I'd like to introduce my wife as well. Uh, Catherine uh, Holly Ann has been a partner.
partner in uh, the last four years uh, and will be a partner going forward. Uh, and it's so wonderful to have her here as well. Uh, I'd like to take one moment, though, to recognize someone that's not here in the school today, and that's Kim Turner. Kim Turner was a beloved lunch monitor here at Irving Robbins School. She died tragically uh, a short time ago, and this school is still grieving uh, for her. Uh, and I know we all share in the, this school's grief. Um, I'm glad that you're all here today because I want to tell you a little bit about why I'm here. Uh, my uh, mother's uh, family came to this country some generations ago. They moved to New Britain, Connecticut, and they went to work in the factories of that city. My great-grandfather and then my mother's father, my grandfather. And, uh, their daughter, uh, my mother, was uh, one of the first people in her family to go to college, um, lived the American dream, and raised a son who believed, was told to believe, that I could do anything that I wanted with my life so long as I gave a portion of it back to the community that gifted me. Uh, after eight years of economic malfeasance in this country, that American dream is at risk for too many families. Now, over the last year and a half, I'm proud of some of the tough decisions that this country has made to try to rescue this economy from the brink of another Great Depression. But now that we have stabilized this country, there are still too many people that are hurting. There are still too many who go without. And the question in this campaign is about what do we do going forward? Now, I have a feeling that Senator Calagiri is going to spend a lot of the next hour talking about all of the things that he disagrees with. I'm going to talk about the things that I'm for. I think people are sick and tired of candidates griping at each other and trying to talk about what the other person is for or what the other person stands for. What I want to talk to you today is about my vision moving forward for this country. A vision that involves middle class tax relief, so we put money in the hands of the people who will really grow this economy. A vision of making sure that every time we send taxpayer dollars to Washington, it gets spent on U.S. jobs. And a vision in which we can make this country energy independent within the next 20 years. That's what these debates should be about. My vision for this country moving forward and Senator Calagiri's vision for this country for moving forward. Uh, I'm thrilled that you're here. I'm glad to join you and I look forward to the debate.